Previously on Coupled with Chaos, a personal podcast, you'll be able to talk. You'll be bored. What's going to happen is you're going to be bored stiff. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to be trying to disconnect myself all week from the ice machine to go and get our dog outside so she doesn't pee and poop everywhere. Yeah, it's a whole nother thing. I'm trying to work out that I work from home. That would be helpful. That's the plan. So I may have to pop out occasionally, but we'll see. Otherwise, I'm just gonna you'll be cleaning have lots of surprises when you get <sighs> home. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> All right. I'm Kelly. And I'm Steve. And this is Coupled with Chaos. All right. Well, it looks like we made it at this point. Yay. I guess 18 hours of... You went in for surgery two days ago. Almost yes. exactly, right? Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah, it was at 3 o'clock on Friday. That was... Survived. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think for us, this was a little different because for the first time, you've had other surgeries, you were really allowed to eat in the morning, or you did eat in the morning before you went in. Yeah. Yeah, and I was never able to do that before. They always said nothing after midnight. But I wasn't having surgery till 3 o'clock. That's tough. No no drink or anything. You can't even suck on a, a candy or chew a piece of gum. <laughs> and even when we got to the facility, we were supposed to report at what, 1045? Um, 11.15. Oh, we left the house at 1045. Get there at 11.15. Yeah. They right. were a bit panicked when you got there that you had eaten in the morning. Yeah. And you'd had yeah, your, but the, your normal the tea. nurse, Yeah, the nurse from their facility told me that I could. She said as long as it's eight hours. And she actually encouraged me to drink up until eight hours before um, because I told her that they always have a hard time getting an IV. And the only thing I can ever do to help with getting a vein is drinking. And because they don't I'm let me drink water. before surgery, I, I can't. I can't help. And then I told her the last surgery got postponed an hour because it took two nurses an hour to get a vein. Not drinking they tequila. Were and, no, and they were up and down both arms. I mean, it was an ordeal. You remember how bruised I was. The issue about you when when we've gotten into recovery was just how famished you would be. Yeah. And it's not the first time. We left one other time and it was... It was nighttime. It was dark when we uh-huh. left. And, and so, that was the one that got postponed. Yeah. And and so for you to eat beforehand, I don't know if the recovery was better or worse, but to be able to have food on your stomach and your body <laughs> to at least absorb that before the surgery, I think was the best thing for, I think, for your recovery. You know? Yeah, because you don't much feel like eating for a while after. And and also it was better because they didn't make me take any gabapentin, or which is like a nerve pain medication. Mm. Um, but it's a controlled substance, much like uh, narcotics. And so they didn't make me take any of that stuff before I went into surgery. Normally they would make me swallow that and then wheel me into the OR. And I'm totally against that stuff. It makes me so nauseous. It's unreal. And so all the other times they've made me do that, and I really protested. And the only thing they gave me was anti-nausea medication this time. And I did not get sick because, I mean, this is what we counted, like my eighth time with general anesthesia Mm. in my life. Anesthesia does not make me nauseous. It is the pain medication. So did you convince them of this or did they just neglect to do it or what? No, I, I, I know I had told my doctor ahead of time that it makes me really sick and I didn't like taking stuff as I went in. So she may have asked them not to give it to me. I was impressed with who was the lady that was there, not your surgeon, but the lady who was there with you. Oh uh, yeah. That's my, uh, that's his, um, surgical assistant and she's the doctor that i've been seeing for the past year i had I hadn't actually seen dr dolce the surgeon since the last surgery that he did um she was the one treating my torn plantar fascia last year and she was the one um taking care of my shoulder this time so this was actually the first time i had seen him i would entirely seen her she's wonderful her name is kelly also kelly i Menifee. think um I could and just we have a good rapport. sense back there that there was a lot of confidence 
with you and her. Or yes. Your confidence in her, I think. Yes, yes. And so maybe that you have somebody that you've seen for a while and more of an advocate about what's best for you. Because, you know, right. these insurances and liability things and everybody's trying to, I guess, cookie cutter everything. Right. So that you could get in, actually eat beforehand. Right. Because you ate at, it was what, 6? Six, 6.15. I got up at 5. It's not too out of the question for me. And had your stuff ready and it got you up at 6.30 when your stuff. No, it was 6. six. I got up at 6 and I started brushing my teeth and getting ready. Oh. And then I came through and ate at 6.15. And then um, I was done by 6.30 and then I was drinking my tea as much as I could until 7. So it was at least some kind of normal morning routine for you just a little earlier. Yeah. And I felt better sitting there all those hours having eaten and had my tea. I felt more Well, normal. I think the benefit and also a change this time was we got there 11.15 was the check-in time. And we were, that's when we were there. They probably took you back there at 11.30? Uh, Maybe 11.40? No, I think, it, I think it was later. But you didn't sit out. Noon. You didn't sit out there that long. Yeah, not like before. I mean, I had to go through all the stations and and the payment and all that beforehand. But I, oh, that's yeah, right. I went I back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the time that you were sitting. Yeah. It didn't seem as long as before. They let. Here's the first thing that happened is they let me come back there with you while yeah, that was you, different. you were waiting. Yeah, in the pre-op section normally they let you're, you come back and wait you're back there alone and i'm in the waiting room alone and yeah. just watching this board that never gets updated and they text you right. and stuff but they came and got me yeah normally i'm in pre-op for hours just by myself i can't see a clock i've already removed my jewelry I, you know i don't have my watch it, it sucks being back there just alone watching patients get wheeled in and out of the OR. It was kind of nice being back there together, I think, wasn't it? Did it, it help was. kill the time? Did it help yes. keep you at least calm. Um, calm? Yeah, it did. And my nurse was super, super nice. Dan was very entertaining and and he was very comforting. Yeah, I don't think um, there was ever a time where, well, again, I just hadn't been back there before. But, mm -hmm. So he was, uh, it was a male nurse. He was, what, 62 years old? Yeah. He but, didn't look it. No, I, I would have put him maybe even younger than me. Me you too. Know, or at least our yeah. age. So Yeah, he, he seemed younger than us, but he was 62. Very nice guy. And he had had this surgery, and that was part of convincing me to do the, the um, single shot mm -hmm. nerve block instead of the pump was because he had had this recently and had done the shot for the first time and said that it was good. So, all in all, I mean, of your numerous surgical procedures, your time at the facility, I think, would would, would this be, I don't know, would, you, would this be your, your best one? Yeah, I would say so. Which is yeah, I, because I mean, for me, my number one thing is I hate coming out and throwing up right away. I mean, I just feel horrible. And so this is the first time that I've had surgery there that I wasn't extremely nauseated when I came out. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I was much more myself. Did, was my color any better? No, I think it was about the same color. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know that you know when you go under anesthesia like that, if there's a um, I don't know there there's a way for you not to look all it was like this gray green color that uh -huh. I think that um that you were and it probably took until I don't know at least the next day probably for for it to get a little better mm -hmm. but it, yeah it was a bit wicked um yeah but I think um it was just just a much, all of that was a much better experience. And I don't know, maybe yeah. it's, it's post-COVID. But the first, no, because your first surgeries, what that was, was the before. difference? Um, it was right before COVID. I did November 2019. And then the second one um, was during COVID. I had to wear a mask when I was in there. It was, uh, 
um, February 2021. Did they ask you if you wanted me to come back or did they just come get me? No, they said, we'll go, we'll go get your husband now. It's like, oh, okay, cool. And, and I wondered because when they took me back there, I passed other little patient areas mm -hmm. and I saw people from the lobby sitting with patients and I was confused because I'd never seen that before. And so, you know, maybe it is a post pandemic thing. I don't know, or a change in policy, yeah. but normally, normally they don't have people back there until, until you're in recovery. I mean, for us, for me, it was kind of fun. We, you know, got to make some nicknames for some people as they came through yeah, and right. some you know we're kind of watching the operations of of the facility while we're there and so yeah this... it got it got real busy and then people were rushing and saying bye and then it was like dead because the, we've been there for so long the issue was is, is that you were last the, the last, last patient one. yeah and i think it would have been it was kind of a bad thing but I don't know, because it worked out so well and the ability for you to eat. Yeah, I think I didn't need as long to recover after as in the past because I didn't have that nauseous period but we don't I was know. getting sick. We don't know? know if it was because of you having food in the morning or for what was the drug that they didn't have you take? Gabapentin. I think it's that. Mm. Well, and that it, what does nauseous. in general, what does gabapentin do? What is it? It's a nerve pain medication. So, like, people take it that have, like, fibromyalgia, mm. like that generalized nerve pain where they get the, you know, shooting mm. pain and nerves all over their body. They'll take that. Um, in fact, uh, it's one of the things that uh, people in the laryngeal paralysis dog group, support group, give their dog. That's one of the drugs they take, and it wow. makes them nauseous too. <laughs> makes everything. So then they have to, then they have to take anti nausea medication. Then there you go. Your dogs are on a cycle of of pill popping. Yeah, you're just treating <laughs> you're treating side effects at this point. Exactly. So that was good. I'm. I mean, ultimately, I think that that part of surgery went. I guess is the best as it it, it could. Yeah. I liked hang, being able to hang out there back there with you. It was a whole yeah, lot Yeah, that was better. nice. That was much better. And, you know, I you, talked you into, not that it wouldn't, didn't take a lot, but they gave you some post-op, um, some of your, um, um, start your physical therapy. Oh, yes, yes. And just kind of us yeah, sitting well, there talking allowed us it, to go, hey, let's make the appointment while we're sitting here during yeah. bedtime. She did that because she wanted me to get in therapy sooner than in the past because um, normally you wait, um, but she wanted me to start it right away, like this week, um, because of the fact that I have a tendency to develop scar tissue, and that's how I ended up with frozen shoulder for 15 months after the first surgery. And so the second surgery was to remove the scar tissue because they couldn't unfreeze my shoulder. It was that scarred up. So to avoid that, they wanted to start physical therapy right away. Because by the time I came out of the sling last time, it was already frozen. I couldn't even hang it straight down by my side. It was stuck in position. Before I think we break, what... Did you have done to your? This was your right shoulder this time. Mm -hmm. What did we have? What did you have done to it? Um, my subscapularis um, rotator cuff tendon, which is um, attached to your um, scapular in the back, mm -hmm. um, and you feel the pain in the front, like right where your armpit goes in. Um, that was deeply torn so they repaired that with um i don't know how many anchors they ended up using probably one or two because it's a smaller tendon um last time it was a different tendon on the other side and it was a, cr a larger one and it required four anchors but i think they just did one on this one um, and they so they anchor it into the bone and it's a dissolving anchor so in about a year it will go away and where does it go 
it will have just it just dissolves it gets absorbed into the bone yeah. and then like and that. then by then your tendon has reattached hopefully yeah well it happens a lot faster than that but mm. it takes that long for the anchor to disappear right and then um my bicep tendon um slipped off the groove because of the tear because they support each other and so when the tear happened and it was so large it just dislocated so um they had to sever that from Ouch. the joint at the top remove the top section of it and make it shorter and then they attached the bicep in a new location on the side of the shoulder with a permanent titanium button Cool. I guess that sounds good. So, so that was new. I did not have to have that before. Did they have to clean up anything inside the shoulder, scrape anything out. Or? Yeah. Um. I I think he also removed the bursa because it was inflamed. Um. They did what they call um subacromial decompression. Just my anatomy, genetically. I've said my, it for years. <laughs> your DNA. My shoulder bones kind of curve downward. A little thicker they sit a little lower on the bottom than normal and so it basically closes the space where the bursa sits on top of your shoulder and it can cause impingement or pinching and cause inflammation in the bursa which thought? they they had to do that on the other side too so they just remove the bursa because it grows back in a year hmm. With all new healthy tissue that's not inflamed. That's good. And then, the, and then while they have that out, they shave the bottom of the bone down to make it smooth and not low, We're so that there's more room for the bursa when it comes back. Of, you're like a shoulder expert now. Yeah. How many shoulder well. surgeries have you had now? This Three. is your third. Yes. So. And also the labrum, which is the um, rim, it's like a lip of cartilage that lines your shoulder joint in the capsule. And so the ball of your shoulder rotates around and that's like the cushion. Mm. Um, that labrum was frayed. So it had lots of tiny tears. So the edge of it was all rough. And so it, there's friction in there when I move my shoulder. So they shaved that off also and made it smooth. Got rid of all the fraying. Mm. And I had to do that on the other side also. It's a lot. We're yeah, like a medical and... podcast now. Reality <laughs> TV, right? Relationships and shoulder experts. <laughs> and you're not a doctor. You are no. just a frequent patient. Yes. So there's that. So, and, and you sign a thing saying if the surgeon finds other issues while they're in there, you give them permission to take care of it while they're at it. So mm -hmm. I won't find out till later what else they may have He done. called me. Normally they bring you back and talk to you, but I think he was probably in a hurry because you were last. Yeah, he I didn't probably, see him after. He probably wanted to beat traffic, so I think he probably called me from his SUV. Like, I'm <laughs> out. Probably, yeah, because normally they would come out and tell you how it went, but I didn't see him at all. He gave me just fast of what he did, and I'm like, ah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, but it was so much, so fast. Like, could you send me a text of this? My wife would really like to know. I would really like to know. Yeah, but he it, he didn't say there was anything extra, and it seems like he did what they said they were going to do. Okay. But he said you were great, and I'm like, you know, it's all good, all good and well, but what we need in this is we need him to be great. You're really, I mean, nothing <laughs> right. personal, but in this state, you're just laying there sedate. I'm at the mercy of, yeah. of everybody involved. He's the one we need to be having a, maybe a winning day. That's what we need to have happen. So we're going to talk about maybe the trip home. I mean, this is not the most exciting, we realize, not the most exciting podcast, but this is what we've been dealing with and seeing. Yeah. We've known this has been coming. We'll talk about recovery. Yeah. We'll talk about the support of the family. And I guess just in general, kind of where we are now. Um, for those of you who listen um, Sunday night for 90 day, that will probably push a day, I would assume. 
unless something weird happens this evening, I don't think we'll get to the 90 day show. So we'll at least be a day late on that. Yeah. Um, Cause showering and stuff is an ordeal. Right. And there's also the, li- the lions. Oh, there's so that. this is a you issue. No, I'm all game. You know, I'm all <laughs> business, right? So we can do, we can take care of business. I can. Uh, except for when the lions are on. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, this is the NFC Championship game. So there's only winner of this game goes to the Super Bowl. Not a great chance of the Lions winning, but if we win, we are in the Super Bowl. And that has never happened. So it's kind of a thing. So we'll talk about all that and more. This is not many things this is. This is not a football podcast. Mm. We could do hockey. We could do that. That we, was a great game. We did we go to the before. game. We did go to a hockey game the night before the surgery. I guess we'll talk about that too. So all that and more coming up. Thank you for listening. You can listen to the rest of this episode by subscribing to our Coupled with Chaos channel on Apple. By subscribing to our Patreon. Or by subscribing to our Supercast. For three ninety nine a month. Where you can hear us talk about reality shows, real life, and more on our podcasts. Covering shows airing on TLC, A&E, Bravo, and the WE Network. Just follow the instructions in the show notes. Tell your friends about this podcast. And rate and review us on your favorite podcast player. Follow us at Coupled with Chaos on all the socials. Or contact us directly by email at coupledwithchaos at gmail.com.